Today we're going to look at a very interesting doubly infinite product, which can kind of be seen as a generalization of a well-known infinite product. So in particular, let's suppose that we have A and B on the interval from 0 to 1, not including 0 and also not including 1. Our goal is to find the product over all integers n of 1 plus b to the power 2 to the power n over 1 plus a to the power 2 to the power n. Okay, so, and I should point out that I found this in Math Magazine. It's problem 1706. And so when I said this was a generalization of like a pretty well-known infinite product, I think it's this well-known infinite product here, which will prove as a lemma. And that is for all x between negative 1 and 1, not including either, we have the product as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 plus x to the 2 to the n is equal to 1 over 1 minus x. Okay, so let's look at the proof of this. So I'm just going to transpose this left-hand side up to the top. So there we've got it, this product as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 plus x to the power 2 to the power n. And so the way to think about an infinite product is as the limit of partial products. So let's rewrite this as the product, or sorry, I should say the limit as we'll call it capital N goes to infinity of the product as little n goes from zero to capital N of, well, it's gonna be the same thing, one plus x to the two to the n. But now let's write that out just to see what we have. So we've got the limit as n goes to infinity of, well, one plus x to the two to the zero, which is one plus x to the one, and then we have one plus x to the two to the one, so that's one plus x squared. The next one will be the next power of two, one plus x to the fourth, all the way down here to one plus x to the two to the capital N. Okay, great. And now I'm gonna quickly rewrite this in a different form, and then we'll talk about exactly why we're able to do this. And in fact, I'm gonna write this as the limit as capital N goes to infinity of one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth, all the way ending. Well, you might say, well, where are we ending? Well, the largest power of x we can achieve is if we take x times x squared times x to the fourth, all the way up to x to the two to the n but that's gonna be x to the power two to the n plus one minus one. That's like kind of a well-known formula that if you sum powers of two, you get something like this. In fact, it's exactly a finite geometric series. It's just the common ratio is two, so in the denominator you have two minus one, which is one. Okay, so now let's look at this a little bit closer and how do we know that each of those coefficients is one? Well, in fact, it comes down to uh, the fact that there is a unique binary representation for any natural number. Notice we can only achieve one by doing one times one all the way up. And then, well, notice here, we can only achieve x by taking x from the first thing and ones from everywhere else. We can only achieve x squared by taking a one from the first term, x squared from the second, and one from everywhere else. To achieve x cubed, we take an x here, an x squared here, and then ones. And again, each of the exponents can be thought of as natural numbers that we are expressing in binary, but each of those binary representations is unique, so there's only one way at getting at it. Okay, so anyway, that's how we have, well, this step right here. But notice I've got a finite geometric series again, so I can sum this up. So I've got the limit as n goes to infinity. My common ratio is x in this case, so I'll have one minus x in the denominator, and then I'll have one minus x to the two to the n plus one in the numerator. 
But now what we can do is let x tend towards infinity, and since x is between negative one and one, this will tend towards zero, and we'll end up with one over one minus x as we desired. Okay, so notice that that seems like it'll take care of the positive part of this product. So notice that we could use it for the numerator and the denominator kind of separately. Observe that there's a companion result here that if you take the product as n goes from zero to infinity of one over one plus x to the two to the n, you'll get one minus x. So this result and the companion result can be applied up here to the product over all non-negative integers. Now we just have to explore what's going on with negative integers. So let's do that here. So let's look at this product as n goes from minus infinity up to minus one of one plus x to the two to the n. So of course, like if we can get an idea of what's going on here, then well, we can play with these numerators and denominators kind of separately. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before. I'm gonna rewrite this as a limit of a partial product. So now we'll have the limit as n goes to infinity, and then I'm gonna take the product as n goes from minus capital N to minus one. So that's gonna look something like this. We'll have one plus x to the half, That'll be the n equals minus one. One plus x to the quarter, all the way down to one plus x to the, let's see, one over two to the n. So something like that. And now just for one step or two, I'm gonna do a change of variables here to make everything look a little bit nicer. And what I'll do is I'll take t and set it equal to x to the power one over two to the n. Okay, good. So with this substitution, what do we have? Well, we're gonna have the limit as n goes to infinity of, well, we'll have one plus t. So that's from that term way down there. And then the term just before it will give us one plus t squared all the way down. This term right here will be one plus t to, let's see, that'll be two to the power n minus one. Okay, but now we can play the same game again that we did before, multiply it out, use the uniqueness of the binary representation, and that's gonna give us the limit as capital N goes to infinity of one plus t plus t squared. In this case, it's gonna end a slightly different place. It'll end at t to the two to the capital N minus one. Okay, but again, what we can do is use the finite sum of a geometric series here to rewrite this as the limit as capital N goes to infinity of one minus T to the power two to the N over one minus T. But of course, we can't take this limit as is because these values of T depend on N. And so we can't just, you know, take the limit and let that t to the two to the n go off towards zero. So plugging this substitution back in, we'll end up with one over x over one, or sorry, one minus x over one minus x to the power one over two to the n. But now let's observe as n goes to infinity, this term right here will tend towards x to the zero, which is one. So we're left with one minus x over one minus one, but that's gonna not converge. So in fact, we can't deal with the negative parts of this product with the numerator and the denominator separately. We seem to have to deal with them together. So that doesn't mean that all, all hope is lost. Observe that we could probably use this calculation from here to here, and then just tag on an extra step or two at the end. And well, that's exactly what we'll do now. And maybe we'll put that together into our final calculation.
Okay, so now we're ready to do our final calculation based off the lemma that we proved, as well as, well, it was an exploration that didn't lead us to a convergent product, but I think it taught us kind of how to do the last couple of steps here. Okay, so anyway, we can rewrite this as the product as n goes from zero to infinity of one plus b to the power two to the n times the product as n goes from zero to infinity of one over one plus a to the two to the n. And then finally, the product as n goes from minus infinity up to minus one of one plus b to the two to the n over one plus a to the two to the n. But now, well, I'm gonna rewrite that as a limit of a partial product, or at least I'll write this last term as a limit of a partial product, just as we did before. But I can take care of these first two terms using our lemma. So observe that that's gonna leave us with one minus a over one minus b. So this first term will give us one minus b from this first part. The second term will give us one minus a from the second portion of that. Okay, good. And then after that, we'll have the limit as capital N goes to infinity of what we got from this. So now let's notice that this numerator is playing exactly like our exploration, and that ended with one minus b over one minus b to the two to the minus n. I'm gonna write it a little bit differently. I wrote it as one over two to the n, but I think it's better to write it like this. And then, well, the denominator will do the same thing, but it will be reciprocated. So I'll have one minus a in the denominator, and then one minus a to the two to the minus n in the numerator. But notice that that one minus b in the numerator and the one minus a in the denominator are constants with respect to the limit. So I can just bring them out and thus cancel. So the one minus b cancels there, and then the one minus a cancels like this. And then next up what I'm gonna do is a change of variables for our limit. And that change of variables will be, well, let's say, let's let u equal two to the minus n. Now let's observe that as n goes to infinity, u will tend towards zero. Okay, so what does that give us? Well, now we'll have the limit as u goes to zero from above, I guess I should say u goes to zero from above, of one minus a to the u over one minus b to the u. But what we can do at this stage is use L'Hopital's rule. We can take the derivative with respect to u of the numerator and the denominator. Observe that we do have an indeterminate form. That indeterminate form is zero over zero. So now using L'Hopital's rule, we'll have the limit as u goes to zero from above of well, let's see, we're gonna get a minus sign, we'll have a minus a to the u times the natural log of a over minus b to the u times the natural log of b. I think that's pretty clear just based off those derivative rules. So observe that as u goes to zero from above, this a to the u will tend towards one, and then this b to the u will also tend towards one. That's because a and b are between zero and one. So that means, well, their quotient pretty clearly also tends towards one, leaving us with our final evaluation of this product to the natural log of a over the natural log of b. And that's a good place to stop.